Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about something totally different to what uh, this channel has been about in the past. Um, although there is some parallel. I'm going to talk about mindfulness and more specifically the challenges that I personally had uh, with mindfulness. And challenges not in the sense of something that prevented me from doing mindfulness, but the challenges that come with doing it consistently for a period of time and um, how it can sometimes be difficult to sort of stay on the stay on the path or kind of be optimistic and positive about it or um, kind of see the value in it maybe. So I've been meditating, meditating, doing mindfulness. Um, I generally say mindfulness as opposed to meditation because meditation is quite a loaded um, or it's a term that comes with quite a lot of like expectation about, you know, you're doing this and you're kind of sitting cross-legged. Um, whereas mindfulness is, you know, quite a simple practice of just um, basically just simply being present um, in the moment and typically focusing on the breath and noticing things in the body. Um, and I've been doing this for six months very consistently. Um, but about 12 months. And I've actually been exposed to mindfulness for far longer than that. Um, almost 10 years I've kind of known of mindfulness and have been doing it to some extent. Um, but just recently I've found that it's become more difficult in a way, bizarrely. Like I thought it would be more, it become sort of easier. Um, so I um, sit for 20 minutes each day most days. Um, I say most days, as you know, obviously I sometimes I might miss a day and sometimes I might not do 20 minutes. And that's kind of the reason why I'm, uh, I'm making this video in the first place. So one of the challenges I've come across, which I think most people will with mindfulness, is simply boredom. The idea of sitting and doing nothing, essentially doing nothing, um, just flies in the face of the way that we kind of live our lives you know, if you were to sit for 20 minutes at a train station or um, if you were to wait for 20 minutes for an advert to finish or something, just like, you know, whatever, 20 minutes worth of time, you know, it doesn't work. You know, you wouldn't ever kind of really um, want to do that, so to speak. It's not something that we kind of like are wired to enjoy or want to do. Yeah, so it's, it kind of just feels boring in a way. Um and along with the bore, the sort of boredom comes that that kind of intent, all that constant nagging of of thinking about the end of the the practice, the end of the meditation. And it's funny because it's kind of the exact opposite approach that you kind of quote unquote meant to have. You're meant to be present with the moment and not think about the end, not thinking about why you're bored. But I guess then you could turn it on its head and you could say, well, perhaps you know, one should be present with those feelings of boredom, be present with those feelings of um, kind of urgency. And that's the kind of second thing that I've, I was thinking was you know, this feeling of urgency, even when nothing is urgent, even when you don't have anything to do um, in the 20 minutes or in whatever time you sort of set out for yourself, even if there's nothing that you need to do, it's easy sometimes to feel like there's a kind of looming, time pressure or a looming um, urgency, even when there isn't, you know. I think, it's, but again, it's this, maybe it's sort of just a funny symptom of modern life where it kind of always feels like, you know, you've got to be doing something. You've got to be doing it kind of efficiently and quickly and you've got to make, you know, do the journey quickly. You've got to finish the task quickly and you've got to be productive so again, it kind of makes you think, well, you know, maybe I should think about, you know, what am I even striving for in being efficient or productive or, um, and it's just a general sense. It's not really even a cognitive, cognitive thought. It's just this feeling of, um, urgency. And, and for me, it kind of transitions into kind of anxiety as well, which is one of the main reasons I uh, started consistently, um, doing mindfulness. And it's funny because you've got this expectation around what mindfulness should be. 
and at least what it should come to be as well, because it might not start off in a way that you had envisaged, but you sort of think, oh, okay, I'm going to do this for a few months and it's going to turn out to be something um, that resembles kind of traditional stereotypes of what meditation, what mindfulness should look like, you know, very kind of calm or, you know, finding peace and finding presence. And and I've kind of, I haven't found the opposite to be true, but I've kind of found that when it was more novel, it was more interesting and it probably evoked less boredom, but it also seemed to be something that I could kind of focus more, uh, more easily on. And now that it's lost its kind of novelty, it's more difficult. So I've actually found it more difficult to sit for 20 minutes recently as opposed to when I started, which is the exact opposite of what I expected. Um, And it's interesting that I use the word novelty because a kind of fundamental concept in mindfulness is to have a kind of beginner's approach to every, to every, uh, every session. And even moment to moment, just being interested, uh, for example, in the breath. So being interested in just seeing what the breath is doing, you know, today or in this moment. And how, not necessarily how it's different, but just kind of observing what, it, observing it for what it is. But that, again, it goes so um, against what we're used to doing and we're used to experiencing in kind of in life essentially because we're always seeking novelty and something new and interesting and different and engaging and um you know whatever whether it's media like you know um visual you know let's say movie or tv series or a documentary or a a book or a youtube video or or you know a tiktok you know as as um as terrible as 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 terrible as it as it is, it's sort of you know quite a um, pervasive uh, force in today's society, and it's just novelty, 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 over and over and over again. Um, kind of flanked by, I suppose, that kind of, um, well, that meme culture, the, um, the kind of, that thread of commonality where things are similar but different each time, similar but different. And you kind of have this, um, yeah, this kind of, this cycle of novelty. And (laughs) it's, uh, it's funny because you just, it's hard to find a breath to be novel. It's hard to find a 20 minute session of sitting on your own in silence as novel. So it's difficult. People often talk about do you know do mindfulness. You know they always say you know we've got this mental health crisis in young people, and all age groups you know are probably struggling, especially with um, the pandemic. And people just say do mindfulness, do mindfulness, do mindfulness. But are we going to clarify what that even means? Like, or are we going to perhaps talk about you know the challenges of 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 this practice? It seems bizarre that it seems it's almost as if like you know it's like you flip a switch you know you do mindfulness or you don't do mindfulness and that's it. Um, I suppose it's probably just because it's an underappreciated, underutilized practice. Um, but it's not an antidote to a problem, and that's probably another slightly problematic way of thinking about it is that one might start mindfulness for a reason, perhaps to deal with stress and anxiety. And we become attached to that idea that it's there to fix something, which, again, in the practice, is the exact opposite of the mindset. The mindset is um, about acceptance, about, um, in some ways, compassion, and noticing, not being judgmental, and <laughs> we're doing it to feel a certain way, um, to solve a certain problem. So I think, I mean, maybe I can sum up the the sort of difficulties with mindfulness as 
very simply the conflict between let's say western ideals and modern society and with the ideals of mindfulness which are you know typically said to be rooted in sort of eastern eastern traditions um, so perhaps that's the crux of the of the difficulty and i suppose the, one of the reasons i'm doing this video is because i've thought about this for weeks and months and i still don't really know what the answers are and i suppose the irony is that there aren't answers <laughs> again always wanting an explanation and a remedy to the challenges where there are none <laughs> i've got here as well giving myself always kind of the option to kind of do something different like I might sit down for 20 minutes and once 10 minutes rolls around I might think okay let's just do five more minutes you know let's just do 15 minutes instead of 20 um, and it's cheeky because a lot of the time I don't give myself the option to I try not to give myself the option because my mind just flits and it goes and it's kind of neurotic it kind of constantly wants to readjust and change and um, try and it's almost like a yeah it's like a rocket that's trying to kind of like slightly correct its course thinking that it's a better direction to go when it should just you know just let it kind of let it soar so i've recently i found that yeah i'm giving myself more kind of liberties as it were during a meditation i might sit and i might think right okay i'm struggling again i'm not sure what i'm struggling with but i feel like i'm struggling and i'm just going to do do 10 minutes today in fact i did i think i did that today i sat for 10 minutes instead of 20. The final thing I've got down here is um, integration. So this is where you essentially take the processes and the mindsets and the, the practices of, of mindfulness and you kind of apply that um, in your life when you're not sitting doing the mindfulness. And I think obviously one of the biggest challenges with that is just remembering to, like if you're, it's something that you're intentionally trying to do, it's quite easy to forget to do that. Um, and in fact, this is probably something I've struggled with less because I haven't actually made it an intentional sort of thing to, I haven't said to myself, I'm going to try and be mindful while doing something like while brushing my teeth, for example. It generally, like I sort of throughout the day, I will check in with the body or the breath, or I might try and, you know, if I'm walking, I might notice the feeling of the feeling in my feet, for example. But I do find that I use it as, again, a remedy for a state of mind. And I think if I'm if I'm attached to the idea that it's a remedy, then I think it sets it up to fail when mindfulness kind of by definition can't fail. Like it isn't something that has a goal or it has a result. Like it is just, it is what it is. Yeah. I've got nothing else to say, I don't think. That's kind of just like the last um, thought out of my head. So there we go. That's a video about the challenges of mindfulness, at least from my perspective. Now that might, I mean, if you got to this point in the video, you probably might be interested in the challenges of mindfulness. Um, so I'm not going to do this sort of like classic disclaimer of, well, that might not have meant anything to you. Well, if it didn't mean anything to you, you probably wouldn't have got that far. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.